Hi everybody and welcome to AP Chem video. Our topic today is bond energy. Okay, we are actually in chapter 8 for just a little this section only and these are the page numbers that you want to read in your book. All right, so bond energy. Well, it is defined as the amount of energy needed to break, oops, try that again, to break one mole of a specific bond in the gaseous state. Bond energy really is a measure of how strong a certain bond is. So high bond energy, well that would mean it takes a lot of energy to break that bond. Therefore you can conclude that we're describing a strong bond. Perfect example, let's say we're looking at the molecule ethane versus ethyne. So you got C to C single bond versus C to C triple bond. Which one of these do you suppose would have a stronger or higher bond energy? Well, I hope common sense would lead you to believe that this guy right here would be a stronger bond. So the bottom idea or the bottom line is that if you have three electron pairs being shared between the two carbons, that's going to be a lot more glue holding the two atoms together, a much stronger bond. So here's sort of a little little take home message is that single bond bond energy tends to be weaker than double bond bond energy, which tends to be less than triple bond energy. So takes more energy to make, break a triple bond. Okay? All right, big idea right here. Bond energy is always, always, always an endothermic process. It always requires energy to take two atoms that are connected via a covalent bond and break them apart. Requires energy. Therefore, bond energies are always positive values. Okay, so just a little reminder, when bonds are broken, delta H is positive. When bonds are formed, well, that's actually making a connection between two atoms. When you make a connection, it's like making a friend, you become happier. Happier means more stable. More stable means low energy. So when bonds are formed, connections are made, delta H is negative, meaning exothermic. Energy is released. Okay, bond energy, not surprisingly, is measured in kilojoules per mole of whatever bond you're discussing. So if we wrote an expression to show what a bond energy might look like, if you took the hydrogen molecule, simply break it apart, notice it is in the gas phase, you would get hydrogen atom and a hydrogen atom in the gas phase. Okay, and uh, in terms of representing the energy, the delta H for the bond energy, HH, the amount of energy to break that bond, 435 kilojoules. Okay? So that's sort of the basics. Now what do we do with this information? All right, first and foremost, uh, bond energy is yet another tool to, to calculate delta H of reaction. So, so far, uh, you could use Hess's law to calculate delta H of reaction. You could use heats of formation, products minus reactants, cal to calculate delta H of reaction, or you could use bond energies. All right, so let's do an example. So consider the reaction below. Calculate the delta H of reaction using the bond energies provided. All right, so we're reacting hydrogen gas with fluorine gas to make hydrogen fluoride. Okay, first of all, really, 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 really helpful with bond energies is you need to draw a picture. You have to very clearly be able to see where your bonds are being broken and where your bonds are being made. So I got us started here. Pause the video, go ahead and draw this out. But here's my hydrogen molecule. Here's my fluorine molecule, and then we're going to make two, don't forget the stoichiometry here, HF molecules. All right, so what bonds are we breaking and what bonds are we making? Okay, but first of all, uh, the equation we're going to use uh, is kind of like the heats of formation equation we're using, products minus reactants. But this is the only time, probably in all of chemistry, that it's kind of more reactants minus products. Because what you're going to want to do is take the energy of the bonds broken and add all that together. Well, on what side do you have bonds broken? That's going to be the reactant side. So you're going to take the bonds broken, add it up, and then you're going to subtract the bonds made, so bonds formed. Okay, and you'll see why in a minute. So how is this going to work? Well, let's see. We're going to break this bond. We're going to break this bond. The atoms are going to rearrange. And then we're going to make this bond. And we're going to make this bond. So if we wrote this out, it might look something like this. We have one HH bond being broken, plus one FF bond being broken. These are my bonds broken. This is the endothermic part, because energy is going to be required to break this bond and to break this bond. Okay, and then minus 
Well, this is the exothermic part. These are the bonds being formed. So that's why it's reactants minus products because of this right here. That negative right there is going to change the sign. So when we subtract bonds formed, okay, um, what you're going to see is what's endothermic here becomes exothermic. So we're going to make two HF bonds, okay? So now let's actually put some numbers in. It's going to look a little something like this. Uh, you're going to have one mole of, because of the stoichiometry, because of the one in front, of the HH bonds. Well, according to my information here, 436 kilojoules per mole. Okay, so I have one mole. Notice that the moles conveniently cancel out. Okay, and then I'm going to also have to break one mole of the FF bonds, which comes in at 153 kilojoules per mole. Okay, and I dropped the moles because we just know they're going to cancel out, and that's fine. Okay, I just wanted you guys to see how that worked. Okay, so this is my endothermic part, so this is all totally positive. Minus my bonds being made. So we have two moles, two moles of the HF bond, which to break it is 565 kilojoules per mole, but we're making it. So that's why this negative's here. We're actually going to release that much energy to make those bonds. All right, you go ahead and punch this into your calculator, and overall, we're releasing more energy by making these bonds than we are to put in to break these bonds. So it comes out overall, the process comes out to be exothermic, negative 541 kilojoules. All right, what do you think? Pretty easy? Okay, here's another ex example, a multiple choice question. It says, which one of these choices would best represent the bond uh, or bond energy for HF? I'm sorry, for HBr. All right now, when you look at this, so we're looking for a chemical expression to represent the bond energy for HBr. Well, I hope you would definitely cross these off the list because those are really more bond forming, right? So that leaves these three choices. Which one of these best represents the HBr bonds simply breaking? Nothing more. And I hope you guys would lean towards letter C. So that's a pretty easy question. All right, uh, let's go back to calculating the delta H reaction. We're going to do one more example together. So it says, using bond energies, estimate delta H for the reaction of ethylene with fluorine. Okay, so first of all, like I said, you got to draw these out. Okay, and I already drew this one out. Um, notice that C2H4, so 1, 2, C, 1, 2, 3, 4 H's. Um, that actually leaves the carbon unhappy. Carbon has to bond four times. So that's how I knew there was a double bond between the two C's. Um, then my fluorine. Now this I probably wouldn't expect you to know, but basically the fluorine's, uh, the, well, first I should say that this bond's going to break. It's going to go from a double so a single bond, and that's going to leave a spot where carbon's unhappy, one, two, three bonds, so the fluorine's going to come in there and make the fourth bond. Okay, so take a look. Hopefully this looks like somewhat of a logical reaction to take place. All right, so now you just have to decide. What are your bonds being broken, and what are your bonds being formed? So let's see here. Well, I definitely have to break this double bond. I'm going to break that double bond. Okay, and then I need to break this, so my fluorine separate. But it looks to me like the CH, the CH, 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 and the CH, 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 CH are all staying intact. So you don't really have to worry about those. All right, so what bonds am I forming? Well, I totally broke that double bond, and that's kind of how it goes. You either break the entire double bond or none of it. You don't just break it so it turns into a single. If you know what I mean. So we're breaking the double bond and we're replacing it with a single. So that's a bond we're going to form. And then, of course, we're going to form the CF bonds, two of them. All right, so if you sort of interpret that, it might look something like this. One CC bond, CC double bond broken, one FF bond broken. This is my endothermic part minus my exothermic part. So change the sign. These, this is going to be energy released, the CC bond and then the CF bond two of them. Okay, plug in your numbers from the table, 614. And by the way, where do you find this? Okay, uh, if you take a look in the next example, uh, that gives you a page number in chapter 8. And also, Ms. Schneider and I, we both gave you this reference material with all the thermal chemistry data and bond energies are on the very back page. So you got lots of places to look to get these numbers. All right, so the CC double bond, 614, the FF bond, Okay, and then we're making the CC single. Notice the CC single bond requires less energy to break than the double. We already talked about that earlier. And then the CF, 485. Okay, so add up these, 
subtract these because these are exothermic energy released. And again, this reaction comes out releasing more energy okay, from the bond formation than, than energy that you put in for bond breaking. Okay. All right, guess what? Your turn. There is one more example, and Ms. Schneider and I would like you guys to complete example seven. Have it done. Have it ready to go. So when we come into class when it's due, that's the first thing we're going to look at. Thanks, Scott. Thanks a lot for listening, and you guys have a wonderful day.